Welcome back. So what you can see here is I've got these aluminum sheets that are 24 inches square and I've put the L channel on the back side there to add some support. And as you can see I've taped it into place to cover the wheel well. And I've lined it up sort of with the leading edge of the wing there. So the curvature of the wing follows the curvature of the aluminum or vice versa. Uh, that way it's only really curving in one uh, direction so it's not you know prone to want to pop off of there so I need to test it and see um, you know running down the runway up to different speeds if it's going to show any sign of movement okay really quickly I wanted to show you uh, some of the stuff in the MoTeC uh, log there uh, for the run that I did that you're about to see uh, so first of all uh, one of the things I did there on the engine was I've hooked up the ambient air, air temperature sensor um, to or have moved it into a position there where it's um, underneath the radiator so now I'm getting the temperature of the air coming out of the hot side of the radiator and you could see when I was sitting on the ramp there it was 104 and when I started running down the runway there it actually got to about 98 um, before it started to increase again and I think that's because you know you're getting all this fresh air but there hasn't had a chance for the extra heat to go to the radiator and the intercooler yet and uh, what's interesting here is the intercooler gets to a 304 there or the inlet air and the outlet air is 187 so actually dropping the temperature about 120 which is pretty good I think it maybe could be better but I think that's pretty good and unfortunately because of the design and that the hot air that comes out of the intercooler there goes through the center section of the radiator after that so that's not really helping the radiator much um, but anyway there's not much I can do about that uh, at this point the other thing I did was I've um, dropped the uh, fuel back to a maximum of 90 milligrams there to keep things cooler and I increased the timing and actually still getting the same type of power yeah, there you see 3780 6 uh, rpm there so uh you know that's that's definitely a positive and uh anyway let's get on and um show you uh what happened there on this run so back out on the runway again and this time around i've got um cameras set up in some different positions and here you can see i've got telltales on the top of the wing here this is mainly sort of a, just as a camera angle test here not planning on you know getting the aircraft aircraft off the ground or anything and I had a pretty decent crosswind today when I was trying this um, yeah you can see there there's not really you know much of interest going on I'm going to try and get in close there at the transition of the strake with this camera and see what's going on uh, potentially that other camera that you can see out there on the wing um, once I've finished with this test I can turn that around and point it forward and see what's happening there at the straight transition that may be better than trying to see it from this angle uh, but it got definitely nice laminar flow over the wing just doing this run down the runway and this was just to 80 knots and then I just kept it at 80 knots for a little while and then ultimately let it roll out so um, getting ready again to potentially take the aircraft into ground effect again but only if um, I can get a day where the wind is you know no more than five knots and coming directly down the runway or uh, it's a completely calm day I just don't want to try it um, when there's a crosswind there's just not enough time when you get it into the air to um, you know kick the rudder in and hold the wing down um, like you would normally do um, as you're about to land in a crosswind condition so I don't want to risk you know messing anything up all right so uh, from last time I'm, I had this camera angle way back on the wing there it just wasn't close in enough so I've moved it sort of half span there so I get a better view of what's going on I still sort of zoomed it in but uh, the goal here is to see if the flow of the air is coming cleanly out there and if you pause it there you can see all those telltales are coming out nice and straight I was a little bit concerned um, that it was going to sort of uh, the flow was going to sort of suck back in there uh, because of how much lip that I put on the cowling vent uh, that's below there that you can't see I, was, I thought it would one you know sucking harder in one place and it's going to basically cause the air to flow back inwards here at the prop but 
uh, as you can see again here um, it's not doing that so I'll probably create that same lip that I have on the top there on the bottom half as well just so I'm getting uh, even more um, sort of suction out of that area there so I'm pretty happy with that none of those telltales um, you know showed any signs of hitting anything like in other words being drawn back in those little screws on the spinner um, would be prone to catching um, the end of the tell telltales um, or the tufts if uh, you know they were hitting there and they would fray so I think I've got the best solution right now in terms once I added that extra, add that extra lip on the bottom there I think I've got the best um, possible solution that I can do for um, you know air being drawn out of the cowling there I don't think there's too much more uh, that I can do with that all right so moving on to the foreplane and again this is kind of just a preparation for a camera angle and and tough positioning to see um, you know how things are, are looking there I wasn't you know planning on doing anything here that was going to really um, you know get this thing towards any sort of stall or anything like that um, but you know having these tufts there and the camera angle to be able to check what's going on um, ahead of time is good you don't want to be uh, up getting it into ground effect and not have the instrumentation that you're really wanting so let's just look and see what happens here and again we had pretty decent crosswind from the right it was I think it was about a solid six knots at 90 degrees so or 80 degrees from the runway uh, but that's looking pretty good there I don't see really any problems there but obviously um, it's not generating a lot of lift it's it's actually at six degrees um, angle of attack just when the aircraft is sitting at zero so I guess it is you know it is generating some lift there um, but the flow looks pretty laminar there. I don't see any real problems. Um, but we'll see what happens, you know, when it goes into ground effect um, next time. We'll see if we're getting any separation there, and we'll know, you know, when the four planes actually approaching the stall. And we'll also be able to see there what's going on. You see, I, I put the elevator in there just for a little bit of aerodynamic braking at the end there. Uh, I don't see any, you know, real problems with with the uh, laminar flow there. A little bit of a disturbance here on the inboard ones at the front there, but um, I guess that's pr possibly something to do with just the way that the uh, fuselage is tapering there, or it may have something to do with the crosswind that was out there, or any sort of wind gust. Uh, but overall, it's just you know a test for that camera angle. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. That camera is just sort of sitting in the front window there, uh, just above the glare shield. And finally, the last camera angle is uh, under the wing, and this was to check on um, not so much the flow, but these covers over the wheel wells, just to make sure they weren't doing anything weird. So I did one run ahead of this run up to about 50 knots, and then you know parked that aircraft and got out and had a look and made sure that you know I didn't see any sign there was no signs of a tape moving or anything like that around the edges and then this one was to about 85 knots uh, and I don't really see anything weird going on there in terms of the aluminum it doesn't look like it's buckling or anything like that or flexing or vibrating or anything like that so it's probably going to be okay um, just you know with the one strip of tape all the way around the edge there and I'll keep an eye on it as I do my runs and ground effect and that just to make sure that the tape isn't sort of lifting anywhere you see quite a little bit of turbulence there on that fuselage right behind the wheel um, strut there and I think that's a lot of that has to do with the linkage there air potentially air running in through the nose goes down the keel and can come out these side openings there um, and that could basically be creating a flow out of there that you know is turbulent because it's coming pushing sideways out and that may be what's causing that um, you know I could potentially cover up the nose well but I don't really want to do that because you know obviously it's not going to happen um, later on once you know start you know doing normal you know takeoff and gear attractions 
Anyway, so uh, hopefully next week I'll have these new uh, coolant tanks, but in the meantime, um, I've already moved some weight up forward there into the nose, and I'll be measuring my um, weight and balance here next week and, and just checking to make sure that um, I've got the CG more forward than what it was. I'm pretty sure that you know the 8% wasn't enough. 10% was what Mark sort of recommended at the top end. Um, so I'm going to take the static margin to 10% and uh, I think it'll fly a lot better at that point. So anyway, that's a little quick update uh, for this week. Thanks again for watching and uh, tune in again next week and see where I'm at with this uh, level of testing. Thanks again. Cheers. Cheers.